Hi everybody. So in today's video, we're going to be learning Unit 2, Lesson 5, which is how to take the derivative of trigonometric functions. So the learning target for today is I can calculate the derivative of trigonometric functions. Now we are also going to eventually learn exponential and logarithmic functions, but today we're going to focus on just trigonometric functions. So the first thing I'm going to do is teach you some trig derivative rules. So let's start with sine. The derivative of sine is cosine of x. And the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. The derivative of secant would be secant of x times tangent of x. And the derivative of cosecant would be negative cosecant of x times cotangent of x. The derivative of tangent would be secant squared of x. And the derivative of cotangent would be negative cosecant squared of x. Now, none of these rules are particularly hard, but I do think that memorizing them and remembering them can be really challenging. So there are a couple patterns I want to point out to you. If you take the derivative of sine, secant, or tangent, the derivatives have the same sign, so positive or negative, as the original. So sine has positive cosine secant, has positive secant tangent, and tangent has positive secant squared. However, if you take the derivative of cosine, cosecant, and cotangent, all of those derivatives have the opposite sign. So the derivative of cosine is negative, cosecant is negative, and cotangent is negative. The way that I remember that is that S stands for same. So if you take the derivative of something that starts with an S, it has the same sign. And if you take the derivative of something that starts with a C, C stands for change, and that means you change the sign. So that's kind of how I remember that. The other thing that I've noticed are there are some patterns. Both secant and cosecant, their derivatives are the product of two functions. Secant is secant tangent and cosecant is cosecant cotangent. So I always remember those as being kind of similar because both secant and cosecant kind of go together. They're like partner functions and their derivatives are like partner derivatives. Tangent and cotangent, I always remember, both have derivatives that are the square of another function. So I like to think about tangent as, and cotangent as almost like partner functions, and their derivatives are like partner derivatives. The last pattern that I've always noticed is that secant and tangent are kind of like buddies. So the derivative of secant is secant tangent, and the derivative of tangent is secant squared. They kind of work together. The cosecant and cotangent are similar. The derivative of cosecant is cosecant cotangent, and the derivative of cotangent is cosecant squared. So I'm pointing these things out to you because those were some of the tricks that I used when I first learned these to memorize these rules. You need to find patterns and tricks that work for you um, so that you can remember these rules over time. Let's practice using these rules to take the derivative. So if I want to take the derivative of 3 sine minus 4 cosine plus 7 tangent, y prime is going to be, and I'm going to do each of these terms one at a time. So the derivative of 3 times sine would just be 3 times cosine of x. The derivative of negative 4 cosine would be, now watch how I'm doing this, this is a negative, and the derivative of cosine changes the sign. So it's going to be positive for sine of x. And last but not least, the derivative of 7 tangent of x would be 7 secant squared of x. So it's pretty much the same way we've been doing derivatives, just one term at a time, just that now you've got to use some trig rules there. For problem number two, it's very similar. So we would have f prime of x is equal to the derivative of 2 cosecant. Now, cosecant is a changer because it starts with c. So it would be negative 2 cosecant of x cotangent of x. And co, the next term is negative 3 cotangent, and that's also a changer because it starts with a C. So instead of negative, it would be positive 3 cosecant squared of x. 
And last but not least, the derivative of 5 secant would be plus 5 secant of x tangent of x. Again, not really making anything crazy here. I'm just using the rules to take derivatives. Now, one of the things that does make this trickier is when we start to combine some of the rules we've already learned with these new trig rules. So we're going to start by doing an example here of where we would use product and quotient rule with a combination of that and trig functions. So this first problem right here says, find the derivative of the following function. And I'm going to use product rule here. And the reason I'm going to use product rule is that I have x squared is like my first function and sine of x is like my second function. So the derivative here, I would use product rule, which means copy the first, so just x squared, times the derivative of the second, and the derivative of sine would just be cosine, plus copy the second, which would be sine, times the derivative of the first, which in this case would just be 2x. Now we can also combine um, quotient rule with trig functions. So that would be an example like this one, where we have a top and we also have a bottom. To find the derivative here, I would use quotient rule. <clears throat> so the derivative would be, low d high minus high d low and low squared goes down below so i'm going to copy the low which is three minus sine of x d high so i'm going to take the derivative of secant which would be secant of x times tangent of x minus high so i would copy the secant of x d low, so I would take the derivative of the bottom, which means the derivative of 3 is 0, and the derivative of negative sine would be negative cosine, because sine makes the sine say the same. And low squared, which would be 3 minus sine of x, goes down below. Now, the most common mistake here is that I see students forget to do product rule or do product rule when they're not supposed to. So what I want to do is point that out and be very specific about when we need to use product rule and when we don't. There are times when product rule is fairly obvious. I think it's fairly obvious we need product rule when there's an x squared and a sine of x. But this is an example of two very similar functions, one of which would require product rule and one of which wouldn't. How we can tell is that product rule is something we're going to use when there's two functions that each use x in the problem. So here we have 3x and sine of x. The reason we do not need to use product rule for this one is that this is just a 3. It's not a 3x. So it's not a separate function. It's just a coefficient. Now, we can also use chain rule in combination with trig functions. If I gave you this problem and I said find the derivative, it's pretty straightforward. It would just be f prime of x is equal to cosine of x. But when we do a problem like this one, where it says g of x is equal to sine of 2x, this 2x here forces me to use the chain rule. Because now, instead of just an x, there's an inside function. It's 2x. So in this case, the outside function would be sine, and the inside function would be 2x. So g prime of x would equal derivative of the outside, which is cosine, leave the inside alone. So the inside here would be 2x, times the derivative of the inside, which would just be 2. There is one tricky situation that often comes up, which is the idea of sometimes chain rule is there, but it's kind of hidden. So what I want to remind you is that when you see a squared here next to the sine, what that really means is that you have sine of x squared. And I think rewriting this problem as sine of x squared helps us to see that there really is an inside function and an outside function. So if I were to take the derivative here, I would start with the outside, which means I would drop the 2, 
leave the inside alone and reduce the power to a 1, which I'm not going to write because I don't have to, is, and leave the sine on the inside, times the derivative of the inside, which would just be cosine of x. Another example where there's kind of this hidden chain rule would be the next one. So secant squared of x really means secant of x squared. So when I want to take the derivative here, I would need to use chain rule. So I would take the derivative of the outside, which means 2 times something to the first power, leave the inside alone, and then times the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of secant would be secant times tangent. Now on the next page, we're going to go through some examples to just practice doing this chain rule process. So for problem number three, it says f of x is equal to cosine of x squared. In this case, the outside function would be the cosine, and the inside function would be the x squared. So chain rule says that to find the derivative, we need to take the derivative of the outside. The derivative of cosine would be negative sine. Leave the inside alone. So I'm leaving the x squared times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. Now, some students make a mistake here because they think that we can multiply the x squared times the 2x. We can't do that because the x squared is actually inside of the sine function. It's not separate. But what we can do is we can just move this 2x to the beginning to make it more like a coefficient. So we could rewrite this as negative 2x <clears throat> times sine of x squared. Now on the AP test, where these are often multiple choice questions, you will always see it rewritten like this because it just looks a little bit neater. Um, but obviously, mathematically, these two representations are equivalent representations. For problem number four, once again, we're going to need to use chain rule. So the outside function here would be secant, and the inside function would be 3x to the fourth. In order to take the derivative, we're going to start by taking the derivative of the outside, which means the derivative of secant would be secant times tangent. And we're going to leave the inside alone. So that means the inside for both of these is 3x to the fourth. We're leaving that alone. Times the derivative of the inside, which would be 12x to the third. Now, once again, on the AP test or on a multiple choice test, you will always see it rewritten with this part of the problem at the beginning. So you'll always see it as 12x to the third and then secant of 3x to the fourth tangent of 3x to the fourth. The most common mistake that I see here is that students forget to replace both of these inputs with 3x to the fourth. They want to put x's there. But remember, chain rule says leave the inside alone. So if the inside of the original problem was 3x to the fourth, then the inside of both of these new functions is 3x to the fourth. For problem number five, our outside function would be tangent. And the inside function would be 6x plus 7. So my derivative rule would be take the derivative of the outside. The derivative of tangent would be secant squared. Leave the inside alone. So that would be 6x plus 7. Then multiply by the derivative of the inside, which in this case is just a 6. Again, you're always going to see this rewritten with the 6 at the beginning. It's always going to have that. So you would have 6 and then secant squared of 6x plus 7. Last but not least, we have 5 cosecant of 7x. So the outside function here is 5 cosecant, and the inside function here is 7x. To do the derivative, I would take the derivative of the outside first, which would be 5, negative 5, cosecant of stuff, cotangent of stuff.
and we're going to leave the inside the same. So it would be 7x both times times the derivative of the inside, which is 7. Now, again, we would move this 7 to the beginning, but in this case, it would get multiplied by the negative 5. And again, this is negative because cosecant is a changer. It changes the sign to the opposite sign. So negative 5 times 7 would give me negative 35. And then cosecant of 7x, cotangent of 7x. Last but not least, I do want to go back to what it really means when we're taking the derivative. So it says, suppose f of x is equal to secant of x, write the equation of the line that is tangent to the graph of f of x at x equals pi. Anytime you want a tangent line, you're going to need a point and a slope. And then you can combine those things and write the tangent line. So for your point, you're going to use the x that you're given here, which is pi. And to get your f of x, your y value, you would plug the pi in. So you would have f of pi is equal to secant of pi, which is 1 over cosine of pi. And if we think back to the unit circle, pi is located here, which is the point negative 1 comma 0. And cosine is always the x value. So we would have 1 divided by negative 1, which is negative 1. To get your slope, you're going to need to take the derivative. So the derivative of secant would be secant of x tangent of x. And then you would plug in your number, which in this case is pi. So you would have secant of pi times tangent of pi. We already know that secant of pi is negative 1. Now tangent is really sine divided by cosine. So you would have negative 1 times sine in this case is 0 divided by negative 1. So you would just get 0. What that means is that your tangent line would be y plus 1 is equal to 0 times x minus pi. And since 0 times x minus pi is just 0, you would get y equals negative 1. In other words, your tangent line here is horizontal. If you were to draw the graph, the line, the tangent line, would be a horizontal line on the graph. All right, that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you for some practice.